Hello and welcome to my next build project. Today I'm going to be starting a new project of building a mini tri. Uh, as you can see, my initial thoughts for this build was to print a 3D tricopter that I found on Thingiverse and build into it all the parts needed, but this was basically designed for a NAS32 and I'm not using a NAS32 so it doesn't really work for me. So I decided to go to Hobby King and order the trifecta. So I've ordered the trifecta. I had I've built up the bits over quite a few months. So I'm sure you've all seen an unboxing of a trifecta before. I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to run through the other parts I'm using. So I'm using Kiss 18 ampere SCs from RC Timer. I've got a B rotor F3 board, also from RC Timer. This is quite a good board because it's got an OSD on board, which I think is quite good. And it runs clean flight, but obviously I'll be running tri flight on it. So I've heard a lot of good things about tri flight lately, so I've always been into tricopters rather than quads. I just think they look a bit more unique, so that's why I wanted to give it a go. I've had to buy a new FR Sky telemetry uh, transmitter module because my old one didn't support uh, S-Bus so along with that I've now got an X4R receiver to work with that. I've got the standard FPV transmitter 5.8 gigahertz but with this I'm not going to use the camera I'm going to try use my SJ cam M200 with HDMI out and see if we can get that to work so as you know with me I'm not really into buying kits um, I just make what I want and make something pretty unique so I hope you enjoy the build I think today we're just gonna get the trifecta out of the box and um, build it up a bit and then just see where all the components are gonna lay out because with this with this board with this uh, B rotor board you also get a PDB so you know so you can see what current you're pulling how much battery you've used which is pretty good as well I think and also it's got 12 volt out and 5 volt out as well for your FPV equipment so we'll get everything set up and we'll uh, start having a look so I hope you enjoy the build right okay I've just been looking through the instructions uh, and basically I'm just going to follow follow the instructions but obviously just put my bits in um, the instructions look pretty good actually, um, not really much to tell you about. I am going to put GPS on mine, um, but mine's a, a version 8 Neo. So basically what I'll do is I'll just do things once and speed through it. If I think anything's interesting of use then I'll, uh, I'll stop and show you. But first things are just putting the motors on, putting the feet on. Um, putting all the back rear section together so I'll just show you what I think looks good so off we go I've just also noticed that I think we're going to have a bit of a challenge fitting this power distribution board into here and then being able to put the cap over so I think we're either going to have to mount it upside down or I have to try to trim these standoffs down slightly so that we just get about them one to two millimeters more clearance for the for the for the cover to go on properly. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but we'll have a look. Right then, hope you enjoy the build. So that's the legs. So see, these are the motors that I'm using. The from RC Timer MT two two o five two thousand three hundred kV. I just put this on the test bench just to do some power testing. So it's just got bullet connectors that I'll take off in the near future. So we're just gonna 
these are quite good because they've got self-locking nuts on top and you get two in a pack so you get one of each we'll have a look what they fly like as you can see they fit quite nicely on that Right, so I've attached the motor, I'm just going to, with the M3 by 6 screws provided in the frame kit, I'm just going to tin these wires here. Then I'm going to slip them, snip them slightly shorter. ESC. I'm going to tin that. I'm going to attach the ESC to the motor. So the idea is that it's going to curve, comes through here down to the back side because this is a right hand motor then the wire is going to curl around like that and then the SC will go there with a tie wrap on it obviously it will need shrink hose on it what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that these can actually get to the PDB first because I might actually need to have slightly longer wires so I'm just going to leave it like that for now so I'll just do the other one but I'll I'll do it off camera, there's no point showing you that again. Obviously all these bolts here, they need thread locking but I'm just going to, I might give it a test flight first to make sure everything's okay before I thread lock everything in. So I'll just do the other side and I'll get back to you in a minute. Right, so that's the two motors mounted. I'm just going to, I've just put a bit of tape around there just to keep them all together while I continue on with the rest of the build. So we're going to next go to the tail section. So we've got two, two tiny. Basically, got two tiny little springs that are going to act as your as your clamps for the side pieces here. So you've got to mount them on there, and you've got these two little pieces here that act as a ratchet. And then again, you've got a metal pin put in here and open the rear mount bag so somewhere in here there should be a 2.5 by 6 so I actually need these little 2.5 mil M2.5 by 6 screws. They're just a small dome head screw like that. So one goes in through the back here. So I'm just going to fit this together now, check it all works nicely and then I'll take it back out and Red lock it. Right, so I just had a bit of a problem there. This hole was meant to be tapped out to M2.5, but the uh, screw just went straight in. So I've had to drill it out and re tap it to M3. So that goes in there. Get a bit of thread lock. We've got blue here. So you're able to get it out one day if you want to. Bit of See what? Yeah. Tighten it up there without going too crazy. I'll push the back cog with a sleeve into the hole. 
And this goes on here. And you use your little washer. Again, this time we are using the 2.5mm one. So what I've done is I've just threaded that on there just to pull the screw into the into the plastic washer because it wasn't fitting in quite quite right. Then add a bit of thread lock again. So it does. Drop that in there and just snug it up. It's got a bit of shoulder in there so that it can still spin freely even when it's tight. Excellent. So when you're building this, you specifically need to get these servos, it's a TGY918, specifically for this, this job. I think it's to do with the, the splines in here for this servo, like, as you can see there. So, so you get that, put it on top, get your small little washer, drop that in on top. And you've got this little M2.5 screw again that you need to drop in. What's handy to do is just if you've got a magnet, put it on your screwdriver just to get it a bit bit of extra magnetism so now it wants us to put it in its carrier it shows it this way around You need to use the screws from the servo here to hold this in place. Just take the wire out there to stop it getting pinched. There you go, that's it. So then this wire is going to come down here and into the body. So now it says there's a little something here to hold the rear landing skid in position. I'm not really sure where that is, I haven't seen it yet, so I'll just have a dig around in the box. Don't know how long that'll last before disappearing into the abyss. That's meant to be a rear landing skid apparently. So the next thing it wants us to do is install the rear motor on the motor mount. So I'm just going to check which direction I need in the tri-flight config and then come back. So I've just realised it doesn't really matter because you put the top of the motor on once you've built once you've built it all up so I can just put any motor on at the moment. The motor's mounted on and the wires go through this hole here. Yeah, 
FC goes in here, so I'm just going to do as I did before, just curl the wires round, put them all to the same length, curl them round and just cut them off. Right, so I think the next thing to do is just to just a direction check all the motors and make sure that they're all the right way around. So I'm just going to do that now, and I'll come back to you. Right, so I check the motor directions, and I'll put a picture on the screen of which way they should all turn around. But this one should turn uh, counterclockwise. Come to put the servo on here. This edge here is a bit sharp, so what I've just done is I've just got the knife and just taken a bit of the angle off there. If you can, it's just nipped the positive voltage wire on here, so just bear that in mind. So, next, you want to just straighten up your servo and basically screw that down with the two screws shown in the instructions. I'm not going to do that because, yeah, again, I don't know if these, I don't think these wires are long enough, so I'm going to have to change it. So I'll just do that at a later stage off camera, so that's how it should look. So I'll put, put that to one side. So now we need to start assembling the frame. And Ah, so you put them in the top of the frame there. Put them on top. And you need your arms. Make sure you get your correct arm for the correct side. I think what you do is just rotate the arm until this pin locks. Push that home, so now that's acting like a little bit of a spring. Do the same on the other side. So it looks like my power wires will be long enough. Just. Right, so this is a try. Fastened together with just two screws. Basically, I've closed up the rear servo mount with the two screws. Just put it back on the servo tester and just got it square, 90 degrees. I've just been having a look at the power distribution board mount. So it's quite tall. I was thinking about putting it upside down but I think it's going to be too much of a hassle if I ever need to do any changes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it the right way up but I'm just going to knock each stanchion down a bit and also I've just cut a little patch out there for that to fit in so I've started doing that, it's taken quite a while so I won't bother putting that on camera and I'll just uh, show you where I've got to in the next episode so thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you later Thank you.